that a 20 year old in a 50,000 cross tonnage commercial ship amongst all male crew in the middle of the big blue Pacific. The money runs out as I was still talking to my mother. It's been five months of no communication with family. Five months of zero communication with friends. Five months of self-doubt. Five months of separation anxiety. These five months brought a lot of fear. But it's been five months that I knew that once that phone call is made, it will be sufficient enough to last me for the next couple of months. The phone call was heartwarming. But the voices that echoed the most and remained dominant in the mind were those of a fearful, a skeptical, and a less informed community. You black, you can't swim. Girl, you're going at sea? What about your boyfriend? But you're a woman. Dude, what if you die? What if your parents die? Oh my word, you're sending a girl child away to sea in the middle of nowhere with men? What if they turn into a prostitute? Fast forward. The girl was docking and sailing across oceans, flying different flags from Africa to Asia, from Europe to the US. The girl moved, carrying the voice of the mom, the mother that had said to her, you will be just fine. From making coffee, treating toilets, from cheaping and painting, through stormy and calm seas, she carried on and the voices that echoed were those of a less informed, a skeptical, and a fearful community. 12 years in the maritime industry, she became Africa's first female dredge master. From making that, offie, that coffee to scrubbing heads, ultimately to earning that captain's trust in taking the helm, ultimately to taking over at her own watch. After birthdays on board, Christmas on board, let alone the FOMO. I mean, she's only in her 20s. Ladies and gentlemen, I remember very well when I passed out as a first female dredge master. 14th of August, an ordinary day, Tuesday. I had just pulled my watch, an ordinary navigational watch, Went to my cabin to rest, and I got to my cabin to a staggering, a staggering number of messages in my inbox. It was messages from my friends, from my family, from the neighbors. I even got a message from my fourth grade teacher. They had seen the headlines about the Black Mermaid, Africa's first female dredge master. And as I got to my cabin to respond to these messages, I started responding and I thought to myself, thank you, oh, thanks, thanks, sent, thanks, copy, paste, thanks, thank you. It was a lot of messages. And in that moment, I had an out-of-body feeling, an out-of-body experience. And I think it hit me then that, wait a minute, maybe just maybe this township girl that I so doubted has done something of significance. It felt like being swung between two extremes in just a matter of seconds. I became the first. But today, I want to share with you the internal battle after being labeled the first, titled the first. In just a matter of a week, I had received 
numerous calls from the media, all kinds of media wanting interviews, and instantly I felt the pressure. With that came a lot of self-doubt. I mean, what do I say? What do they ask? How do I pose? But as someone who'd run out of airtime, calling my mom back then at sea in dollars, surely earning this real airtime on TV and radio must have meant an evolution. I did not mind it, but I still felt undeserving. In just a matter of weeks, here I was, receiving these prestigious invitations from the government and key stakeholders and key institutions internally. I felt undeserving, almost like I was never ready. I'd even Google how to conduct yourself in a prestigious launch, kid you not. I felt like fraud because I wished they had taught me in school how to conduct yourself in a prestigious launch. Here I was, as a keynote speaker in prestigious, uh, uh, in prestigious launches with the respected governmental uh, representatives. Slowly but surely, I realized that instead of reveling, instead of reveling in the achievement, I was spending so much time trying to earn what I had already achieved. I was trying to earn what I had already accomplished. Slowly but surely, I realized this was becoming all about me until the one time. The one time delivering a speech in one of the uh, 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 launches, there happened to be a young girl in the audience, Valesa. Our eyes locked. And she was looking at me almost like, yes, girl, as if we're the same age, because I'm also short and petite. She looked at me with pure admiration and awe. And my heart felt hers instantly. And in that moment, an awakening happened to say, you know what, Londi, there's got to be more to this first. Something much bigger than yourself. As you navigate your life, you are the captain of your life. Remember that. And tonight, Captain, I challenge you to do three things. Only three things along your voyage. <laughs> when you reach a milestone, celebrate. Your achievement inspires the next person that it can be done that actually all kinds of ceilings can be shattered. Celebrate. You could be first in your family, in your organization, in the whole world. Celebrate. You've walked the walk, but don't ever try to re-earn it. You've walked the walk, it's done, you did it. But after celebrating, all bottles popped. After celebrating, Captain, Shift the focus. Ask yourself, what can you do to enhance your capacity to serve? Move from the inward focus and transition into the realm of other. Because there's more reward when you transition into the realm of other. Like in my industry. In my industry, there's only 2% of women only 2% of women in the whole world that are female seafarers out there. In my own industry, in my own country, there's only five ships that are registered. And you can imagine how busy our ports are. There's only five South African registered ships. And so how dare we allow to be swallowed in the hype of first. First this, first that, well done. Now what? What tangible change has been first brought to others than yourself? What tangible change 
has popping bottles and sitting in prestigious events brought to others than yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you. The third sight, captains, that I would like for you to see is once you've moved from the inward to the other and you decide to lead that change, you ask yourself who is following. Not about your next big thing. Who is following? Because above all competence, and above all accolades, captains, is your ability to educate. But unfortunately, we've all gotten way too busy focusing on our next big thing. I challenge you to take only 30 minutes, 30 minutes in your week and engage with the youth. Engage with the youth. And in those engagements, you will be surprised at how many firsts have passed you by. You will also be surprised at how many of your own firsts you never got to celebrate. You will be mostly surprised at how much you know. But you most certainly won't feel the need to re-earn your identity. Through these engagements, you will be challenged. Your perception will be challenged because real conversations get stricken in those brains. Real opinions, real questions get asked from those brains. Your perception will be challenged, allowing you to grow and diversify your capacity to serve. Through these engagements with the youth, you will feel pure delight of being first. You will also feel pure pressure to be an active first, ensuring that you are first, but not the last. Anchors away, there's no rest for the first, thanks.